Okay, so now you've pretty much seen how I color my characters and how I color the lines. So I'm going to show you an easy way to uh, give them some depth. So as I said before, all of my painting is on different layers, which is great. So each of these layers, I can tap on the layer and hit select. And then I can make a new layer above. Whoops, make a new layer above. Now this green shape, everything that's green is still selected. So on the new layer, I'm just going to name it Shadow. And I'm going to change it to Multiply. And the reason I'm changing it to Multiply is so that I can go over uh, this, I can go over the green and it will just make it look less muddy because it's going to, it's going to base the color on what it's going over. So I, I, I know that's not a great way to explain it. But when I do shadows, I just use multiply because it always looks better. So hopefully that's more of a reason. I mean, not really. So there's a few different ways to do shadows. Uh, you don't always have to do black. Uh, sometimes it's like the default. You kind of think that you should do black on shadows. Um, obviously this looks weird. Um, but what I do is I change the, I change the opacity of the layer um, to whatever I think looks good. Like you know, maybe 25% or 20%, 20% looks good. Um, but you don't, you don't always have to do black. You can do like a color like this, which is kind of nice. You can do a bluish color. Uh, shadows and shading makes a big deal because I mean, it makes a big deal. It really changes the tone of, of the artwork. Um, because when you give shadow a warmth or a coldness, then that affects the whole drawing as well. So don't think that you always have to use black. You can use lots of different colors. You can even use like a, like a purple or something like that. You can use any color and it will just slightly change it. So I'm going to do the shading and then afterwards we can change the colors of the shadows and, uh, we can pick which one that we, which one we like. So since I unselected, let me go back to the green and hit select. Then I'll go back to the shadow. Let's see if you can see these lines. Oh no, you can't really see them. But there's like the lines showing that the uh, the layer is selected. So for now, we'll just go with we'll go with a dark brown. So I'm going to try not to get too technical. Let's say the light is coming from here. So if the light is coming from here, then most of the shadows are going to be around the, uh, this side. So right now I'm using a graffiti brush, which is just a basic, a basic brush. Um, but I like it because I can cover a lot of space. It's not too streamlined or anything like that. So at the light would hit here. I'm going to make all of these curves. I'm going to concentrate on all of these curves and all of everything on the left side and even underneath. See, I can kind of close off his head. And basically I'm just going to make everything over here darker. And this does take some practice to get right. Um, but once you kind of get an idea, um, you know, and also drawing from life helps and drawing uh, pictures of, of people and things like that, everything kind of gives you a better understanding of the light. So for example, see his nose here, and he might actually have some shadows here because of the nose and maybe under the lip too. You know things like that now you can do them and just see how they look how they look uh, and sometimes you might not want to keep them like maybe just the one underneath the lip looks looks good and that's the beauty with art is you can make those decisions you can decide what you think looks good and what doesn't okay I'll put a little bit of shading here and then some shading here because of uh, 
the shell and everything else. So I'm gonna go along this side. And you see, I'm trying to keep these lines nice and smooth as well. I'll just color all this to make it easier. All of this can be kind of colored, that back finger. I'll just color that whole thing. And then maybe the back of this finger too. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we'll make a big shadow here. And you notice I also do the shadows, the part, because all of his shell and all of his like person and everything is gonna be kind of giving shadows too. So I just kind of go along this edge as well. So I'll go underneath that. And you see I'm giving a little bit of shadow underneath his uh, knee brace. A little bit of shadow here. And this back toe would be definitely a shadow. And I'll just do this one a little bit too, and on the bottom. This can be completely in shadow, and we'll do the shadow from underneath. Shadow on the toes. This would be a little bit darker in here, in between the toes would be a little bit darker. So something like that. Now we do want to add some shadows on this side too. So we'll just sort of stick to that left side, just like we did. We'll color that all. We'll color this dark too, because his fingers are folded. And we'll give him. We'll give his thumb a little bit of shading as well, and his head, I guess. Okay. So that's in a nutshell. That's pretty much how I would. Uh, shade but here's a fun thing that you that you can do if you have trouble with shading um, do your shading like this first and then take uh, an airbrush I'll use Disney airbrush and if you want to practice just duplicate the shadow layer and uh, hide one so now use the airbrush and then you can just very softly very softly erase away those edges. You wanna keep it really soft and you really wanna make those edges sort of disappear. Because once you make the edges disappear, then you have a nice shaded gradient. And that's another easy way to shade, which I actually really like doing. And that gives it a whole different sort of feel, you know, with that soft, that soft shading. Um, so yeah, those are just two, two techniques that I use for shading, uh, depending on uh, what I'm looking for. And remember we talked about, let me alpha lock this, we talked about the colors, the different colors, if we want to shade something. So I alpha locked it, and now I'll do fill layer, 
Okay, so when you fill, I guess it brings it all the way up to 100. So let me bring it back down. Bring it down to 30% so you can see it a little better. And now I can just, I can change the tone. I'll go closer so you can kind of see. You change the tone of those shadows. And it really makes an effect See if we do that kind of reddish, more green. So it really changes the tone of your of your drawing. All right, so I hope that helped. Oh, the green looks kind of cool. All right, so hopefully that helps. I can't believe this is 10 minutes already. This was supposed to be quick. But um, those are just two ways that you can shade, and that's usually how I shade my characters. I just spend a lot more time going into a lot more details uh, and things like that. But uh, it's really fun, so give it a shot. And reach out to me if you have any issues. All right, keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll catch you guys in the next video.